Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another video tutorial on Photoshop Elements. Now this is an extension from the live show this morning that we had. As I told you, uh, once I got a better feel for um, the Polaroid action, I would go ahead and make a YouTube video for you guys to show you exactly how it works. And uh, playing around with it for a few seconds after the show, it worked beautifully. Now, let's go ahead and get right into this video tutorial because if you're not familiar with actions, let's go ahead and start you there. If you missed a live show or you don't feel like sitting watching the 50 some minutes of a live show, let's go ahead and start you right off with the uh, how to download a action and install it. Now this is on a, um, on a Mac and if that's upset you, don't worry because if you go to jackstechcorner.com, I'm going to have in the show notes links on how to install these actions on every single uh, operating system you may have, excluding uh, Linux because the actions don't work on Linux because Photoshop doesn't work on Linux. But if you have Windows 7 or XP or anything else, you'll be just fine. So let's go ahead and get started on the Mac of how we're going to install these actions and where we're going to find them. As I told you in the live show, if you were there or if not, go to the coffeeshopblog.com. The coffee flop, the coffee flop, the coffee shop blog is written by Rita. Now, Rita is a stay at home mom. She's a homeschooling mom and she has time to do this fantastic blog. And Rita, uh, if you watch this video, if you hear that uh, we have some people from the uh, Jack's Tech Corner come to see you, I want to tell you we appreciate and we thank you for all your efforts. So let's go ahead now and go into free stuff. I'm going to simply show you how to download a um, actual action. So we go to actions and presets under free stuff. And there's all of these different actions and presets here. This morning, and I will soon show you even on this video, how to use the Polaroid effect. So if you want to download that and keep that, uh, that's a great one to have. The other one we're going to download now and play with is uh, this Simply Vintage. I thought it makes the picture look really, really interesting. This is the Simply Vintage. So it gives it that old time paper look. And it tells you here everything it's going to do, what it's going to do for your picture. It tells you how to use the uh, actions. We talked about that in the show this morning. I said, Jack, is there anything how to use the actions? It does show you how to use them here. So you can go down through there as you're running the action. And then it tells you where you can download the action. So we're going to download it right from here. It's going to come up with this media fire. That's where they're hosting their files. I click on download. And then it's going to say save file. We're going to save the file here. I actually created a folder called actions and we're just going to save it right there. So make sure you understand where you're saving this file to. Once you download it, you can right click on here. Even in Windows this will work. If you right click on your downloads and go to show in finder. And then right click and do open. And on the Mac here we are going to open it try to keep this uh, in my video window here we're going to right click on this and open it with the archive utility tool and then right here it is this is your simply vintage action now see it has the png file under here so what we're going to need to do here is we are going to take this PNG file. I don't know why they were there. We're going to copy and just move it up here. Now what we need to do is we need these three files right here. We're going to right click on those and copy them. Now where do they go? Well, on a Mac it's very simple. Go to the Mac hard drive or your main hard drive library folder. Then application support, Adobe, and then once you get into Adobe, look for Photoshop Elements. 
and then I'm using version 10. Now once we're in 10, we want to go under Photo Creations and then Photo Effects. And you'll see a bunch of other ones in there so you know you're in the right spot. Paste those in there. Once those are pasted in there, we're going to go back up two clicks and go to a folder called Local. And then English US. And then here we have the metadatabase.db3. Click on that, click on it once, and just put a number one on there. Now the reason we have to do that is it's very, very simple. So this would, what this does is when we open up Photoshop Elements again, it's going to create that database and pick up our new uh, actions in the Actions panel. So let's go ahead and do that. I will open up Photoshop Elements. Let me get this rolling here. Now when your editor comes up, it is going to take a little bit more time. And that's just because it has to rebuild that particular database. So it's rebuilding our content on our effects. That's what it's working on right now. And then I'll show you where it places that new action so you can use it. Um, and again, actions are something that saves you time in your Photoshop Elements work uh, workflow. You know, you can use these actions and, um, you know, you'll have a certain of way of doing things. But if you can find an action that allows you to do a bunch of layers and a bunch of things at one time, it's uh, very beneficial. And if you'd like to create actions, uh, you can write actions, actually, if you have the full Photoshop. You can create actions and save those out. So it is rebuilding the effects there. And once those are done, we'll be good to go to start using them. And once we get rid of our little clocker on the screen on our mouse, then we'll know it's prepared and ready to go. Now this is on the Mac. Like I said, we can do this on Windows too. Uh, these actions will install on any Photoshop elements. And I will put those links on jackstechcorner.com. Look under show notes and you'll see them in there. So now that we have it here, under our effects panel under here, you have different effects. You got filters, layer styles, and then photo effects. These are photo effects. And this is the different uh, actions I've installed already this morning. Uh, Caramel Dreams, very nice, makes your picture a vintage style. Polaroid Effects, we are going to look at this one because in the live show it didn't go so well. Uh, sometimes live video is not as good as YouTube, uh, where I can create these and edit it and play around with it to make it work. Uh, so we're going to show you how that one works, and it's extremely great. Uh, we talked about Polaroids in the past, I think you're going to enjoy it. And then here's the new one, Simply Vintage, uh, that we just loaded. So let's go ahead and open up an image. And we're going to pull an image here. Uh, we're not going to use that. We're going to uh, no. see here at Columbus Zoo. Let's see what we got here that we may be able to use. Oh, hopefully this one looks all right. Try go with that little guy there, little monkey. There you go. So you want to take him now. We're, we want to make a Polaroid that. And I showed you a few videos back how you can make a Polaroid. We talked about it on my live shows. Uh, and those live shows I refer to, if you've never seen them, it's it's every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the States. Um, so if you want to join us, by all means, we'd love to have you on that live show. We're trying to build a bigger audience. And it'd be nice to have you there. We also do live chatting and Skyping, and we have all kinds of stuff going on. So here we go. So we have it here. Now what we're going to do is we want to take this and we're going to make it a Polaroid. So we're going to use this Polaroid effect that we talked about in the live show that we loaded. Just like we loaded this action, we load it the same way. Click Apply. It tells you you're going to start the action. 
it wants you to do a cropping first of what you want on your Polaroid. I would not suggest to use the whole picture. I would use something like this. We're going to crop it. Click OK. Or click the little check box. Now it's going to give you a chance to do some unsharpening mask here. That's what this is, unsharpening. You can make it less sharp. They say you can go down to 1 if you want. Um, I've kind of left it at about 150 or so. It seems to work out okay for me. Click OK. Now your final image size, I just kind of went with this. With the default here, you can see the final dimensions is 5.11 uh, megapixels or megabytes. So that's kind of the final dimensions. Uh, so we'll just click OK. And there you have it. So now if I go to View, Fit on Screen, I have that perfect Polaroid that we created by hand before. And it took us, what, uh, five or six steps to do it. Uh, man, this is so easy. It worked out so well. And then you take that backdrop and you go, well, that backdrop is okay. There's a few things I've seen we can play with and do with this. One is where it says no inner shadow. If you take that off or turn it on, you take this one off, turn it on. This is your inner shadow right here. If you can see it right up here on the top, if you watch right there real closely, you can see the inner shadow there. And you can click this, I'll double click it, and we can do some uh, styling on that inner shadow if we want. We can even add a drop shadow back in there, size. You can bring out the size of that drop shadow. So you can also play around with it. But here's what I thought I would like to do. This background, I don't like a solid color background. So I'm going to choose a color, which I think I used black earlier, it looks like. And we'll just fill it. And I'll just hit that. And now we filled it with black instead of that transparency on there. And uh, now you have it set up there where you have a beautiful portrait. Uh, you can do like we did in the live videos there in the past. We've uh, added some text on it, and uh, you can te put text on here, uh, zoo, whatever you want to put on there. Can move that uh, to the top here, and it's called zoo there. We can uh, definitely lower this down a little bit, though. Yeah, let's do like 24 points. We could do uh, zoo, just like so. Click the checkbox. You can click the move tool, and you can move that around. Put that on your uh, picture, and uh, you are good to go. So there you go. So that's how you load an action. That's how easy it is to do the Polaroid. It's just as easy to do the vintage and everything. I'm not going to show you all those. This is not how to run actions. This is basically uh, showing you how to install the action and then show you that from this morning that the Polaroid one does really work. Hey, thanks for watching as always, uh, Jack's Tech Corner. I'm really happy to uh, keep doing these videos for you and keep teaching you Photoshop elements. If you get a chance, uh, stop by my website, Jack's techcorner.com like I said you're going to look for the show notes there but also if you have never purchased any of the uh, training DVDs there's tons of learning there for you for Photoshop elements you're going to learn all these great tools and great ways of doing things I have a lot of uh, interesting fun videos for you to follow along with uh, just look at the uh, like I said the DVD collection and I'm sure you'll find something that you'll be interested in also if you download any of these uh, please let them know over at the coffeeshopblog.com that you download them if you can uh, send them an email or comment and say hey I've seen this on Jack's Tech Corner just to give us a shout out back to them. Alright folks thank you very much for watching this episode. Keep those shutters clicking, keep the others editing and I'll see you back here next time on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now.